In the last video, we configured the rotary axis. Now it's time to use it. So let's engrave. This aluminum flashlight is a very special flashlight. So it's not screwed up. <laughs> Alright, zero setting the Y axis to the center line of axis A. First things first, we need to slow it down, like way down. And we're going to measure diameter to diameter, so tool flats facing out. And we're going to step in 10 thousandths at a time to get it closer. And finally step 1 thousandths at a time until gauge resistance is felt. Alright, that puts our tool 126 and a half thousandths Y positive of A axis center line. So now, bringing the tool up and telling the machine to go to Y0 brings us dead center of axis A. Axis Y is set. And here's the formula for you. The chuck jaws. For this job, they need to be reversed. So one, two, three is the order of installation and the numbers used are the ones closest to the inward side of the jaw. And with that, it's time to clamp the work. But first, we need to take note of any part run out, which in this case is two thousandths of an inch. When clamping the workpiece, give it a decent clamp, but not an all out, as tight as you can get it kind of thing as we need to indicate it and probably beat it into submission. <laughs> All we're doing here is finding the high spot and giving it the just repeat the process until the runout is acceptable. Since the part itself has two thousandths runout, that's pretty much the best we can do. So that's our goal. Once you're satisfied, give it the final clamping and one last indicate. 
Zero origin. For this engraving, zero is set to center for X, Y, and A. So for axis A, locate where you want in the center of the engraving and face it up. Then zero it out. Now to knock out X and Z. Okay, all axis origins are now set at the machine. And a quick check to verify toolpath direction positive for axis A. Good to go. For the G code, I'm using F engraved for the initial code. The output here is runnable on a flat plane, but that's not what we're doing here. So from here, the code is modified by G-Code Ripper to create the wrapped version. Some notes here. Axis wrap. This is not to be confused with axis of rotation. This selection, Y axis to A axis, which is what we need here, indicates that all Y moves will be converted to A rotations. And the feed rate, we're letting Mach 3 handle that. Reverse rotary axis. This has to be checked in order for Mach 3 to run the rotary in the correct direction and to display the toolpath correctly. This is not true with all G-Code wrapping software, but for G-Code Ripper, yeah. All right, save it. And here's the code. Runnable and ready to launch. Still, I couldn't keep my hands off of it. <laughs> Did some slight editing to make it more informative and man readable. Added an optional stop. The main edits though are identification and segregation of code for each letter of the engraving. With the engraving only 3000s deep and the part itself having 2000s run out, I expect some rework. Alright, load the program. Now to set it up so the toolpath is displayed correctly. We do that by setting the rotation radius, which is conveniently left over here by G-Code Ripper in the comments. And we need to set the axis of rotation. And there we go. Looks correct. Toolpaths look good. So let's do a dry run. First thing to do, inhibit Z. The surface of the part is Z0. So let's inhibit Z from going below 5 thousandths above the part. Slow the feeds and speeds down a bit. Now like I said, I put an M1 in this program here. So what I'm expecting is the rotary to turn this way and then stop. As long as my optional stop is turned on, and it is. So let's hit cycle start and see what happens. <laughs> Alright, the rotary is good so far. Man, we don't need to spend a lot right now. From here, I like to single block it for a letter or two. Watching the moves closely. Once I'm sure the engraving won't be backwards or upside down, I'll let her go. All 
right, time to peanut butter the cracker. <laughs> what an idiot. Let's do this. All right, good deal, good run. And that's pretty much what I expected based on the pre-run indicator readings. I say rerun these, moving down a thousands. Let's do some editing. All right, we only need to run the last four letters. The quick and clean way to accomplish this edit, just delete it. We're running in absolute mode, so this method is pretty painless. Okay, we go up in Z, spindle on, go to location, then optional stop before the plunge. Save it and good to go. Five high, machine zero. For the depth, a one thousand Z offset. We're at five thousandths. Let's tell the machine that we're currently sitting at six thousandths. So when it goes back to five thousandths, it's actually sitting one thousandths lower than it was. All set? Let's run this thing. Again. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.